Hello chess friends and welcome to Azarov's chess channel and welcome to the computer chess championship season 11 round 2. So the CCC is this very nice formula, we have this double round robin, we have uh, the best engines that are competing, they're playing against each other, so everyone has to face everyone. And today I wanted to show you the clash between Lila C0 versus Stockfish. Before this uh, game, Stockfish was uh, two and a half points behind Lila C0, so in order to make something happen in this tournament, Stockfish really had to win this game. And today I wanted to show you a really, really great opening preparation that Lila C0 has played. This is the so-called Veresov attack against the Dutch defense. So I think this Veresov attack is a great, great opening uh, while playing as white because you're not going into this common uh, C4 ideas uh, uh, in this Dutch defense because the C4 uh, then after C6 and similar ideas in the Dutch defense, uh, black is trying to build this uh, fortresses on light squares and it's really hard to battle. You have to play this uh, tiny little moves. In this Veresov attack, you're playing a much more clear line with immediately pawn breakthrough possibility in the center so i'll show you what's all about let's see the game uh, it was a uh, long game it was 195 moves but i'm going to show you to the critical moment and then after that i think you can analyze the, the end game for yourself so let's see what happened here in the game uh, d4 played by lila c0 we have f5 by stockfish and now knight on c3 this is uh, now immediately the preparation to play the move e4 so basically the whole game is based around uh, this e4 pawn breakthrough possible so that's why uh, d5 preventing such an idea if you try knight on f6 here you can it's also an idea then bishop on g5 because you can play uh, knight on e4 but basically you can take out this knight after f takes e4 it seems that uh, black can do something like d5 and support this e4 but you can crack the position immediately with the move f3 after uh, knight on c6 we can take or if your opponent tries e takes uh, e takes uh, uh, f3 then g takes f3 and in the continuation your opponent can try maybe d5 but you can play this very nice pawn breakthrough if your opponent of course takes it wouldn't be a good idea because now you have two connected pawns in the center and they're controlling this four very important squares uh, all over the board and you see uh, they're restricting this ability of this minor pieces to play you see the knight can cannot come out you cannot play something like e5 because the bishop is aiming on the queen so you see this would be a very very favorable game for white i think so in the game d5 was played but bishop on g5 anyway waiting uh, knight on f6 to come if knight on f6 then we play simply g ta uh, bishop takes on f6 and we are weakening the pawn structure if e takes or g takes uh, f6 then e3 and then bishop on d3 attacking this very weak pawn on f5 so these are the main ideas so that's why after um, bishop on g5 g6 was played by um, a stockfish preparing bishop on g7 and then knight on f6 because then uh, we don't have any more the threat that B white will take the knight on f6 and double up pawns here on the f file so uh, if you try h6 here uh, kick away the bishop uh, here there is also a very very tricky line you can play the move bishop on h4 because it seems after uh, g5 that uh, the bishop is trapped because you can play something like bishop on g3 then f4 but the most uh, aggressive way is to play here e3 uh, if your opponent takes g takes h4 then queen on h5 very dangerous check after um, king on d7 we have knight takes on d5 and uh, now there are several options here for black he can try c6 but then of course you take uh, here the spawn on f5 and this king is really really endangered if your opponent tries here e6 then queen on f7 attacking the king uh, if uh, king on c6 then knight on f4 if queen on e7 in order to trade off the queens then d5 it's very dangerous after e takes d5 you see we have a very very dangerous attack with this bishop aiming it would be a lost game here for for black so that's why f as said after bishop on g5 we have g6 now f3 this is now the so-called Veres of attack with the preparation to play finally this move e4 and crack the position, cracking this space advantage that uh, black is trying to build around this square e4 with the supported pawns here on d5 and f5. Knight on f6, we have now queen on d2, uh, bishop on e6 and now castling on the queen side here by stockfish, preparing rook on e1 or queen on e1 with finally e5 pawn, e4 pawn breakthrough. So, <coughs> knight from b to d7 was played and now queen on um, 
one and this is a line that haven't hasn't played before in top grandmaster level or even in the speed or intermaster level so it's really a new preparation here by lila c0 as said with the preparation to play the move e4 finally so c6 and now e4 this i hope you realize this seems already dangerous here for black uh, we have cracked the position the king is in the center we have a good activity with the star square bishop we have also uh, good activity with the slight square bishop and if the position opens we can bring then uh, the knight here on the natural square on f3 uh, after d takes e4 f takes e4 was played we have f takes e knight takes on e4 knight takes on e4 f takes e4 and now queen takes on e4 the maybe a better line here is to take here immediately queen on a bishop on a2 it leads now after knight on f3 into a simplified line after queen on e1 we can trade off the uh, queens after bishop on d5 c4 bishop takes on f3 and <coughs> g takes f3 i think uh, black can battle here although uh, black is a pawn up but white has the bishop pair still it would be an equalized game i think but instead of this uh, bishop on a2 here um, queen on a5 was played by stockfish and uh, it seems now that um, stockfish can simplify the position because of course we can take the bishop on e6 and uh, stockfish would take the pawn uh, the bishop here on g5 but this likes for problems uh, around white black king are too much to handle i think uh, here lila c0 simply took queen takes on e6 we have um, queen takes on g5 and now king on b1 we have queen on d5 trying to <coughs> improve the position here and simplified <coughs> with the trade of queens but now bishop on c4 played by lila c0 we have queen takes on e6 and now bishop on e6 okay we have now a middle game in which um, we have opposite colored bishops uh, it most often leads into the strawish games but uh, when we watch the game from the spawn structure point of view uh, here you have many pawn islands uh, you have three pawn islands on the other hand uh, lila c0 has only two pawn islands black has this light square problems around around the king and still this pawn on um, uh, this e7 is very weak and also we have now also the possibilities to cement our knight on this very weak square e5 so there are many weaknesses in black's position so that's why it's not uh, draw immediately although we have this opposite color bishops you have to struggle here for a draw but lila c0 will continue the attack and exploit these uh, weaknesses on light square so knight on b6 we have uh, c3 fixing the pawn on d4 an accurate move knight on d5 and now knight on f3 bringing simply the knight out uh, with the possibility to play a rook on e1 and also uh, get use of the semi-open file on uh, d file and also we have a good activity with the rook on the d file bishop on g7 we have uh, g3 again one of the ideas while playing against uh, your dark your opponent's dark square bishop is uh, to place your pawns into this blocking system against this bishop so you see this bishop is so far useless we have the possibility knight on g5 knight on e5 knight on f7 and similar ideas black's king is really endangered here that's why um a, a stockfish tries to kick away this very very annoying bishop and now bishop on h3 <coughs> we have castling knight on g5 we have uh, king uh, rook on e8 and now bishop on d7 bishop on b8 we have rook on e1 finally attacking this weak pawn on e7 so that's why bishop on h6 and now knight on e4 uh, we have rook from uh, b to d8 and now knight on c5 if you try something like b6 it's again i don't think it's such a problem because you can play something like bishop on e6 again of course you cannot take because of the fork knight, knight takes on e6 then you lose one of these rooks so in the continuation king on g7 can be played but now knight on d3 again perfectly fine and and again with the preparation to cement the bishop uh, here on on e5 if knight takes on e6 again uh, rook takes on e6 and you see we have still the possibility to attack this weakness we have attacked also this pawn on c6 so in the next move black will lose the pawn and uh, eventually the game i think so uh, that's why after knight on c5 rook on f2 was played attacking uh, the pawn on h2 uh, here bishop on g4 was played by um, 
by Stockfish. You cannot take uh, the spawn on H2. It seems that you have lost the pawn, but now this pawn is much more important and it comes with an attack against the knight here on C7. So you have to uh, maybe play a counter attack, but uh, if you you cannot protect this pawn, if you try something like knight on D5, you lose here simply the pawn on B7. Even the pawn on A7 is hanging. We have still possibilities, maybe something like bishop on E6, knight on E6. So again, I point you out that you can never take this pawn on uh, A2, at least not now. So that's why bishop on F8 was played. You see this bishop is really passive. It's stuck to the defense of this uh, pawn on E7. And that's why here finally um, Lila C0 simplifies the position on the second rank. Rook on E2, we have rook takes on E2 and now bishop on E2. B6, we have knight on d3 again with the preparation to cement our knight on this very active square on e5. Rook on d6, we have rook on e1, uh, bishop on g7, and now bishop on f3 using this very important diagonal. <coughs> and now uh, king on f8 was played. Knight on b4, we have uh, knight on uh, d5 closing the light uh, diagonal, but now we have first knight takes on c6, rook takes on c6, and now bishop takes on d5. Uh, you see now how um, how strong this likes where bishop is. Again, this likes where problems are uh, really something that stock which has to worry through the whole game we are now a pawn up again these are opposite colored bishops so it's nothing won here you have to play the next uh, couple of moves very accurate rook on f6 we have a rook on e2 of course we are not allowing uh, this rook to come on the second rank attack our pawns e5 was played by uh, Sto uh, stockfish stockfish was didn't have good opportunities to play a counter attack so that's why this idea is to maybe bring the rook here on e5 and then uh, place finally our rook on the second rank but uh, stockfish uh, lila c0 simply took d takes e5 attacking the rook and now rook on f1 we are now two pawns up so it, uh, basically lila c0 cannot lose this game it's uh, only uh, stockfish can hope for a draw here rook on f5 and now g4 we have rook takes on e5 uh, now rook on f2 uh, king on e8 and now bishop on g8 attacking the spawn this uh, rook on g5 and now rook on f7 very very nice um, attacking game here by lila c0 bringing finally the rook on the seventh rank the rook always has to play, be played on, on the seventh rank where most of the spawns are now these spawns are really an object of white attack bishop on e5 we have uh, h3 supporting now this g4 pawn and now h5 we have rook takes on a7 h takes g4 h takes g4 and now rook takes on g4 but now rook on b7 the idea of course is now to finally uh take the spawn and have three connected pass pawns when we make that happen i think uh, you can uh, resign this game from black's perspective so that's why uh, uh, stockfish tried rook on g2 uh, king on b3 and now very important move bishop on f4 uh, trying to bring uh, this bishop on c1 and then finally take uh, the spawn on b2 then mm, white wouldn't have this three connected pass pawns he would only have two connect uh, two pass pawns but they wouldn't be connected so it would lead into a theoretical draw so that's why bishop on d5 played by uh, lila c0 attacking the rook rook on f2 and now bishop on e4 attacking the pawn we have uh, bishop on uh, c1 and now bishop takes on uh, uh, g6 it comes with the check uh, king on uh, d8 but now bishop on c c2 closing the position on uh, on the second rank now it's not an option that uh, white would uh, black would take the spawn on b2 here rook on f6 you have to protect now the spawn here bish rook on g7 bishop on h6 rook on g1 king on c7 and now rook on h1 bishop on g5 we have rook on g1 bishop on h6 rook on h1 simply playing this um, uh, slightly attacks here uh, by, by white the idea now the main uh, strategical idea in this end game 
is to trade off this pawn uh, for this pawn somehow and then have two connected pawns uh, which will be also a theoretical win here by Leva C0 although you have to struggle for a win but uh, these are the main ideas so let's see how Leva C0 managed to do that uh, rook on f2 we have uh, bishop on e4 rook on e2 bishop on d3 we have rook on g2 so you see uh, stockfish is trying to stay uh, with this rook on the second rank we have uh, rook on e1 attacking the bishop bishop on c5 bishop on c2 again bishop on d6 and now uh, rook on f1 we have rook bishop on e7 rook on f7 uh, creating the pin that's why uh, king on d6 uh, must move here and now rook on a7 h7 we have uh, bishop on f2 now uh, leave us c0 place a simple couple of attacks here after rook on e2 we have bishop on uh, d5 this is now a very important moment uh, <coughs> in this end game because we have now we don't have any more these threats uh, to bring the bishop here uh, somehow in between and go to c1 and attack this uh, b2 weakness so as said our main idea is to make something like a5 and then take out with the rook and have this uh, two connected passport so bishop on d6 uh, rook on f6 uh, rook on d2 and now bishop on c4 we have uh, bishop on c5 now rook on uh, f7 attacking the king king on d8 and now uh, rook on f5 bishop on e3 and now finally comes this move a5 so this pawn has to be traded so uh, after b takes a5 rook takes on a5 and uh, i'm here gonna here i'm gonna stop uh, here uh, it's now move 72 the game was prolonged to move uh, 195 so i'm not going to show you now all of these uh, moves uh, the pgn will be in the description below so you can analyze this end game for yourself uh, but this is really a theoretical win because we have two connected pass pawns if these pawns would have been split then uh, it would be maybe a draw but uh, in this position um, Lila C0 has a completely winning endgame and uh, after this win against Stockfish Lila C0 managed to be on the first place with three and a half points in front of Stockfish so I don't think that Stockfish will win this CCC season 11 Lila C0 played very very uh, strong here now in the couple uh, last rounds and deserves to be on the first place okay I hope you enjoyed this game this very of attack uh, meanwhile you can watch my other uh, commented chess games uh, played by computer and you can also watch my best chess games of all time and you can also watch my commented chess games from some current tournaments in which maybe Magnus Carlsen is playing or Fabiano Caruana and many many of these uh, current top grandmasters and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course